Welcome to this tutorial. Today I want to show you a useful and simple technique to optimize your HDRIs. Let's get started. In this video I want to show you a mistake a lot of people make when downloading and using HDRIs for their projects. So currently I am on hdrihaven.com, a really good website where you can download high quality HDRIs for free. I have already selected one that I want to download, which is this abundant hopper terminal that you can see here. And if we scroll down, we have different download options to choose from. So we, this goes from all the way from 1K up to 16K. And the mistake a lot of people make, they want to get really high quality and say, so they go with the 8K or 16K version. However, oftentimes this isn't necessary and they could just as easily go with the 1K version, which is only 1.4 megabyte compared to 100 or even 350 megabytes of those higher resolutions. And if you go with, let's say the 16K version and load a 360 megabyte HDRI into Blender, this will slow down your performance quite a bit. So you might think that this 8K tone mapped JPEG version down here would be a solution since it is 8K, but only 8.3 megabytes big. So for this reason, I want to show you the difference between those various resolutions. And I have already downloaded the 1K version, 8K version, and the 8K tone mapped JPEG. And to show you the difference between them, let's jump into Blender, where I have this scene prepared, and let's load in an HDRI. So I'm going to open up the shader editor, switch this to the world notes. Then let's press shift a and under texture, bring in an environment texture, plug the color into the color, click on open. And first I'm going to load in the 1k HDR. And if we take a look at this, you can see that the background is really pixelated, which is a uh, not really astonishing because we only have a 1K resolution. However, if you take a look at the shadows and the lighting, this is almost perfect. Um, as you can see, we get really crisp shadows and the objects are lit very well. So if we had a scene where we need the HDRI only for lighting, we could easily go with the 1K version and get really good results. As long as the HDRI isn't visible in the background, because otherwise we will get this pixelated background. So now let's switch to the 8K HDRI. And when I load this in, look at, take a look at the shadows. And you won't really see a difference between the 1K version and the 8K version that we have loaded in right now. But the advantage that we have now is that we have a really sharp background with 8K resolution and we don't have any pixelation anymore. So even if the HDRI is visible in the background, we could use this. However, the downside of this one is that it is almost 100 megabytes in size, which might slow down our Blender performance and it will eat a lot of our memory. So then let's try the last option that we have, which is the 8K tone mapped JPEG. So you might think that this is a good solution because it has still a really high resolution, but only is only eight megabytes big. So let's open it up and you can immediately see the problem that we get. We don't have any shadows or lighting anymore. This is because this is in a JPEG format which doesn't support high dynamic ranges. So now all the values in the HDRI are between zero and one, which means that uh, yet this is not enough to create realistic shadows on our objects. So that are the different options that we have. And I tried to summarize this in this document. And so you can see we have a 1K HDRI version which has a really low file size of only 1.4 megabytes. And we still get a really high dynamic range with very good shadows and lighting. The only down point is the low resolution, 
which leads to pixelation if, we, if the HDRI is visible in the background. Then we also have the 8K HDRI, which comes with a higher resolution, so we get a really sharp background. And we also have the high dynamic range and really good shadows and lighting. However, this will lead to big file sizes. Then we also have the tone mapped JPEG, which is only eight megabytes big, has a really high resolution. However, we don't have any dynamic range, so we get really bad shadows and lighting on our objects. So you now might ask yourself, which one is the best solution? So this really depends on the project you are going for. However, I, a solution I often use is to combine the 8K tone mapped JPEG with the 1K HDRI. So now we have a, still a low file size of only 9.7 megabytes, but we get a high dynamic range for the, from the 1K HDRI, which leads to good shadows and lighting. And we also have a high resolution background from the 8K tone mapped JPEG. So then in the end, we have uh, still less than 10 megabytes, but we get almost as good results as with the normal 8K HDRI that is 97 megabytes in size. So let me show you how this is done. Let's go back to the shader editor. And here we need to duplicate those two nodes the environment texture and the background node. And now we have in both of them, the 8K tone mapped JPEG loaded in. In the first one, I want to load in the 1K HDRI. So I click on this number next to it to open up a new image. And I'm gonna select the 1K HDRI, bring it in. And now to mix them together, we need a shader mix shader, bring this in here and mix them together. Now we get a bit of a weird result because we have them to mix together with a 50 50 ratio. But what we can do is press shift a again and under input, choose the light path node. And if we use the is camera ray output for the factor, we're now going to use the high resolution 8K tone map image in the background and the, the other one, the 1K version for the lighting and the shadows of our object. So here is the final note setup. If we want to copy that and that's what the result looks like. I think this is a really good solution and I use this a lot in my projects because now we have a really low file size and still get really good results. That's it for this tutorial. If you want to learn more quick Blender tips like the one in this video, I can recommend you the video course I created together with the Blender Bros, where we share 497 of our most useful tips and tricks for Blender users. The link is in the video description. I am Nick from Blender Daily See you in the next one.